Hey everyone, my name is Steven Corliss, owner of Corliss Architecture. Today we're going to take a look at how to structurally frame a residential addition in Revit. So let's jump right in. So just a little background here. This is what it will look like, but I've got an existing model here that shows the primary gable roof running north to south and then the secondary east to west, which is obviously lower. Uh, there was a an ensuite bathroom in this sort of dormer pop-up area here so this is all going to be demolished and we're sort of utilizing where that existing bathroom was ensuite to locate our new ensuite bathroom so let me just pull a little section through here so we can take a peek inside so there it is. We're going to try and reuse as much of the plumbing as possible. Um, there's sort of a little throne area uh, isolated from the shower and vanity area. And then we've got a couple walk-in closets. One is a little larger than the other, just based on the exterior that we wanted to follow from the ground level all the way up. And then a nice big primary bedroom with a little sleeping nook that we're going to try and utilize. Uh, we ran into some restrictions with the uh, zoning ordinance that required us to essentially end up keeping a portion of the lower roof and setting back the upper building um, 12 feet from the property line. So that's why we've got that looking like that. So let's jump into the structural framing. Uh, I've already got one wall sort of in progress here. So I'm just gonna work through and kind of talk through um, how I do this. It's a generic model and um, it's usually modeled from an elevation view so that I can do the stud framing 16 inches on center. And then when we've got our windows, uh, we put headers in with jack studs to pick up the headers spanning the windows but we've got uh, a vaulted ceiling in the primary bedroom area as well, which is gonna require some ridge beams. And so if you are familiar with that, that's great. Um, if you're not, um, you know, I'll try and educate you as much as possible on what I know. And let's jump into framing this guy up. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've got this wall sort of framed up already, but let's dive in or zoom in a little closer and see what's actually going on here. I like to do each wall as its own generic model with all the sets of uh, headers, jack studs, uh, typical studs, sill plates, top plates, uh, just so that when uh, or if I want to hide that wall or uh, explode that wall in a diagram. It's all modeled as one unit. So the easiest way to do this, I think I've got a elevation already open here, is to work between plan, elevation, and 3D. Uh, but for something like this, you know, I've got this generic model already modeled up here, and I can just copy and paste that across. Take my header and bridge it. So it snaps there. And then we're gonna to wanna to duplicate this. So copy this jack stud to take that all the way up. And then this is what I mean why it's, it's good to work in multiple views at the same time. So this one, I'm not really able to see it snapping to the underside of these top plates here. So I can go in the 3D view, quickly snap the reference point and bring it all the way up. That way I know this stud is flying past and going all the way up, capturing that jam. And I can go back into my elevation view and copy it over. So what I did previously, uh, this set of studs or array of studs um, is actually modeled in plan view. I do 16 inches on center. Uh, it just makes it easy to basically control the entire set of studs with one control point like that. So in order to get the voids cutting through the window areas, uh, I just model in a, a void uh, generic model. 
So that's what this is. I'll select it and edit it so you can see. That way I know I'm cutting through all these studs and that's when I'm able to put in my sills for my windows and my headers above the windows. So that's why you're seeing these studs also kind of cut through my header and I want to pull this all the way up through that and snap these to match. That way I know my studs are going to be clipped and I can copy basically this whole arrangement here that I've got because I know all these windows are the same and just copy it over. And you may end up with, um, you know, some funky little spacing like this. You know, they're probably not going to do a little gap like that in the field uh, as they're framing this up. Um, you know, more likely than not, they're just going to push that stud together so that they've got something, um, you know, a little more solid and it's not too far off the 16 inches on center spacing. So uh, it's important, I guess, to know, you know, how the guys, the tradesmen in the field are actually framing these things up so that you're not um, over designing in ways that, you know, when they look at these plans, they're going to find ridiculous. But, you know, something like that, I've got it 16 inches on center. It's not worth uh, really tweaking my model. You know, they can do as they need to in the field to make it work. So I noticed I still have uh, a couple studs here that are not clipped. So I'm gonna try and grab my tab through and grab my void. Best way to do it is actually to grab the studs that are cut through the void and then tab over and select. Edit it, pull these down. There we go. Just double check that those were cut all the way up and now we're good to go. Okay, so this wall looks like it should be complete. Um, again, just as an example, I'll show you what I meant by this wall essentially being its own element uh, comprised of all those individual elements. And now if I wanted to use this little displacement element tool up here, I can grab that and pull this whole wall off and I'm able to see, you know, the whole wall as a composite. So I'm just going to put that back and now let's work on the other side and then eventually we'll get to the ridge beams up top and see how we're going to frame that across this uh, previous roof line here. So this one This wall actually works out um, pretty well, at least I'm hoping. Let's see if I can go to my floor plan and check out. I should essentially be able to duplicate what I had here and pull it to the other side because the windows are the same. So I'm just gonna line it up on the inside of my sheathing there. And it does look like my studs are the jack studs and jams are lining up so that's all good um, but I do have an offset here so I'm gonna have to copy this back and then do a little return wall there and in these models um, basically for permitting I, I really only like to model the, the structural walls or load-bearing walls and I don't do the interior walls so as we're looking at the plan uh, I guess we can talk a little bit about how we're gonna frame the ridge beam which I've got a load bearing wall down below at this B2 line that cuts all the way through here. So I know I'm gonna have a landing point for a ridge beam that is going to cut across from here to essentially here. I'm gonna to have to create a new uh, structural line and do a beam below. Uh, in the garage to pick up some of the columns that are then picking up above a cross member beam 
that is above this gable roof, picking up then the ridge beam that is carrying the rafter loads. Uh, we're also lofting the ceiling and the ensuite. So from this B2 line, I'm going to have a, another ridge beam coming back and tying into uh, this existing exterior wall. So a pretty complicated little project to get these uh, sort of lofted views. I'll throw up some renderings on the screen to show you what these spaces are looking like. But uh, let's jump back into getting these walls framed up so we can get to those more exciting things. Okay, so jumping back into, this is my struct structural axonometric view. I'm going to hide my architectural wall and then I'm going to hide this one back here also and this one as well. Okay, so I'm going to have to model in place uh, those stud walls. So this should all be good. I'm going to keep it um, just framed basically how it is and pull these back. So let's edit this in place. And I've got my floor line there already, so I know I want to snap my bottom plates and my top plates to match that sill. Let's see if I can grab my top plates and see if it'll snap to I have it down below there. It looks like it is. So in that case, when we can't see, might have to hide this roof for now. Gain access to these studs here. Just to verify that everything is in fact lined up and it was not. So I got a double top plate there. This is the set of studs that I was talking about and I'll edit it to show you what that looks like in plan view. And again, uh, you know, I'd like to model a family that can do arrays. Uh, I think that would be really great and useful. Uh, also, just maybe some model some generic components uh, that can be tagged easily for reference and elevation view and plan view. So I just moved one stud there to capture that end wall. I got a stud there capturing that end wall. I thought I noticed something looked off on that side, but it looks right. Um, maybe the bottom plate wasn't extending all the way. So let's take this back in elevation view. So that should be good. I guess these top plates are extending past, which they should not be. Same thing with the sill, yeah, bottom plate. Okay. So, while I remember, I'm gonna hop back to the other side and clean that one up so we don't have anything jetting out. it's easier just to actually pull it back in view rather than hiding and unhiding a bunch of things and snap it over okay so those two walls are done now I'm gonna basically copy this slide it back and do that inset wall there and then rotate it to do that little return wall there so jumping back into my plan view grabbing this Copying it over to this corner. And I'm basically using the outside edge of the existing exterior wall there, because I know we're gonna butt up into it, uh, use some lag screws or masonry screws and get our starter stud in there and just run everything 16 inches on center. 
So I just copied the previous wall over. I've got all these other framing elements that I'm not gonna need, so uh, we'll clean those up. But first we'll go into this plan view and delete out the studs we don't need. Sometimes it doesn't capture the uh, when you try to copy and paste to the inside edge of like a, the gypsum board or so you might have to actually just pull that in on your own. So that's five eighths of an inch in and we got a really simple stud wall set up there. Um, you know, it, it may not bother you. It may, might bother you if it's not 16 inches on center. That was not so I just want to clean it up and show these guys in the field that I actually know what I'm doing here. Okay, that last one looks like it's less than 16, so we should be good to go. And like I mentioned, these we do not need. We don't need our void cutting through the windows. Our headers and we can pull our bottom plate all the way in check it out in 3d so that looks like that's all lined up there that's good again not really able to see my top plates but I can sneak in and grab a view there I know I can use the multi align option there but sometimes switching between it too often just takes too much time it's quicker to just uh, do it twice okay so that wall's all framed up now and i'm thinking about it now that wall might actually have to go a little higher so that my rafters uh, engage with it since all the rafters are going to be um, in the same plane running across so We'll take a look at that in section uh, a little later on. Let's do, uh, we'll rotate this wall and capture that little return wall there. Uh, looks like I missed uh, some of the beams going across there, lentils. Okay, now I got a clean little wall I can copy and paste. See if it rotates nicely. It does. Okay. Sometimes it doesn't like to. If you've got it uh, snapped to a work plane or something, you just have to clear that out. So also, um, you know, there's corner conditions like this where in the field, you know, they're going to add an extra stud here to capture the corner and make sure they have something to screw the drywall to. Uh, you know, I'm just really trying to capture the, the main gist of it. So, um, you know, if you have standard details, they would capture those conditions. So the framer would know what to do. But uh, typically, if your framer doesn't know that he should be adding studs uh, where he needs to, I think you got bigger issues on your project. Um, Let's clean up this wall here. It just looks like it's going to be about two studs. And again, it uh, looks like it might just be under 16 inches. Center to center. Uh, or just over, sorry. So uh, again, you know, I'm going to sneak that one over. It looks like they're going to be able to utilize the 16 inch on center still with their sheathing dimensions uh, without adding a whole extra stud there. So I'll just pull that one tight to there. Just two studs. Bring my bottom plate my sill back. Go in 3D. And do the same thing for my top plates, but actually, um, 
you know, as I mentioned before with uh, this wall here, which will be raised to capture um, some bird's mouth cuts in the rafters, we will need to model these on a slope, which I will show you later. So for now, I'll just clean them up so they're out of the way. Probably actually just delete them out. But just in case, let's keep them there for reference. All right, and we'll move on to our new gable end on this side here. All right, so I might want to keep one of these walls, but first I want to check something that looks like that wall is going too high up there. little parts and pieces flying out that um, should just be hidden because eventually I like to place these 3d views on sheets so that the framer has something to reference uh, they can see you know essentially what they need to frame what was existing and you know even though I know they know what they're doing it's still just nice to have a visual uh, I've found when I'm able to go in the field and pull up these drawings, uh, they love it. They, they see immediately what they have to do. Um, you know, not that they don't know what they have to do, but I think everyone likes a, a visual associated with the work that they have to do. So let's take a closer look at this wall now. Best way to approach this is I'm going to take, since I've got no windows, I'm going to grab this wall and copy and paste it over in plan view. Rotate. Just bring it snug against that stud there. And we've got a pretty intricate little situation going on here. So I think what I want to do, I know I've got a section cut here that I was using. I'll pull it over so I can reference this. So anyway, here you can see the stud wall that I copied over and it's penetrating through what will be sort of a little bed area nook with some skylights and the existing roof line there. And what we're going to want to do is we need to put in a beam that will span this nook all the way across. Let's see how long it is. It's about 11 foot seven. And that beam is going to have to pick up the load of a column in that same wall going vertically and supporting the end of the ridge beam that is holding up our rafters and allowing us to loft the ceiling. So we got a ridge beam, column coming down, resting on top of a structural beam in the wall, spanning across this opening, and then a column at each end going down onto a beam that will then uh, sit basically in line with the floor joist spanning across the garage uh, length or depth. So that is our challenge here. So I'm actually going to just use a couple drafting lines and sort of see where we're landing with all these items. There's some small things like, you know, offsetting where your studs will be um, to compensate for the drywall or gypsum board. So that's what that little offset is there. Take that 
down to sit on top of my plywood sheathing. I'm going to mirror this line over. And we should be 5 eighths of an inch offset there. And I'll have to do the engineering on these beams. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into that right now, but um, you know, based on my experience and eyeballing it, uh, you know, you can probably set this at, well, it's picking up the, uh, the bridge beam and everything. So this might actually be a deeper beam. It might be 16 inches, like a uh, glue lamb beam. And then you're going to need a minimum three inch bearing, but I like to take those, um, more like six, <laughs> just for assurance for myself. So we'll get a nice set of four studs uh, fastened together to act as a column there. Uh, you know, you can put in a six by six um, you know, dimensional lumber also to serve as the column. Um, usually these guys just like to use what they have on site and just kind of assemble their own column. So that works perfectly fine as well, as long as you have the right fastening pattern. And this is essentially what we'll need to model up, something like this. Mirror this guy over, snap that. Okay, so the infill framing that drops below is, uh, this region, below the beam and inside of this column, um, is, is really just that. It's infill, it's not structural, so uh, it's really just making up the profile of this opening into the nook area. Uh, everything on top of that is load-bearing. Um, and we'll take that up and model in our top plates on a slope to capture uh, basically an enclosure on the outside of the roof rafters and that should be about it so let's go ahead and tackle it take this and so now I'm working in this section view and it's kind of nice uh, I mean, you can toggle on and off the wireframe just to kind of gain more access to the uh, studs that are behind the wall there. So I'm going to start by essentially modeling up what I sketched in there and then work around that. So copy one of these studs to use as my beam. And do the same thing for these columns. And I line the column up with uh, basically the top edge of my drywall in that corner there. And we'll take these studs and we'll just copy them a few times. And we've got our column. Copy these over. There we go. So, let's see, I think I pulled those too far. Those will sit on the bottom plate. And the bottom plate I will pull just inside of that drywall. See, so now we have those. So when I go in plan view, I'll be able to reference those. Um, these, we're going to have to edit and rotate. 
so that we are in line with the bottom of our roof rafter. So I'm going to rotate using this as the place. Well, you know, I actually got to scooch this one up if I'm going to use that. Rotate it in place, place the rotation, align it with the bottom of that. There we go. So that's the top stud. And again, there's some nuances that, you know, it, you can get caught up in the details that, that really uh, can, can bog you down. You gotta be careful how detailed you, you wanna get in these 3D models. Just delete that one out, copy this one down. So for instance, you know, I'm intersecting with that there. Uh, you know, you can either pull that up through or you can model or take one of these since they're modeled in this profile and align it with that. Um, which we'll probably actually have to do. Uh, so let's just scrap that. Copy this over. And I'm sitting on top of my bottom plate and we'll copy or edit the top of this. Just make sure I'm aligned to the right one there. Yep. And this one will actually need to be scooched over. Let's see how we're doing in 3D here. I think we can always save. I think we can remove this wall now. I've got enough sort of modeled up in the works. Hide. Yeah. Okay, so that's butting up against that. Then we're just gonna take that one, copy paste it, and snap the underside to those top plates that are aligned with the uh, uh, roof rafters. So let's jump back into this view. I'm liking this view for this. Edit. Take this. Uh, yeah, I mean, since these are all in profile, um, I'd like to just keep them as a, as a set. Run these 16 inches on center. So there we are again, very close to that. Just gonna pull that over. This I will use my multiple align tool to snap, snap, snap. Okay. And then we're gonna wanna put another plate on top of this. Uh, they'll probably wanna frame uh, basically this wall up here and set it on top of this beam. So we'll provide them a, a bottom plate there and just run the top plates all the way to the peak there. So let's do that with one of these guys. Since it's a new set, I kind of like to break the series and, and start anew. It just makes things like controlling the, the bottom of all those in a series a little more easy. So again, we'll edit this, use our multiple align tool, snap it to the bottom of this. take these all the way up yet so find the center there snap that do the same thing for this edit the profile there we go okay 
So again, just running into our 3D view, make sure that it all looks consistent. It's looking good so far, so let's keep it going. And, you know, once you get to this point, you'll be able to start to copy and paste some of these things over if it's a symmetrical design, which in this case it is. So I can take these elements, mirror them on the center line. Make sure you're copying it over these individual studs. Just pull these back up. Okay, and we're almost done there. We'll just take this all the way across at our 16 inches on center. And actually, uh, we need our column there, so we should be able to copy this one over, mirror it over as well. There we go, and we will put our column in another, um, it's going to be a, a, the ridge beam, again, also probably another 16 by 5 and a quarter LVL or uh, assembled, uh, assembled LVLs with three, one and three quarters by 16 inches, so we want the width to capture that. So again, either a, uh, a six by six nominal five and a half act actual column uh, or these studs again built up to capture that. And I'll just take one of these for now. Um, Kind of have to gauge how far down this is going to come. So if we have a ridge beam in there, um, the, there's a detail where you have to offset the plywood to allow for ventilation. So, but if I take five and a quarter. 16 and I'm just in this edit mode for this profile so I'm just kind of using these lines right now uh, as a guideline but you can you know sketch this out beforehand as well and take this to my center and pull it all the way up so the bottom of that stud uh, or column is gonna have to be about right there Make sure I delete all these out. And I'm aligned with the left to that side, so I will copy these over. Okay. And again, the beam that's gonna go in there is gonna break um, these, this, these top plate stud planes so you can use this it's already set up for a multiple line but I actually don't know if it's going to take the left or right one so we'll just do it manually there we go and now I know my top plates are going to sit right in there uh, up against that ridge beam so that's looking pretty good. We're coming down. We're splitting the load uh, across this beam down onto these columns. And also, again, you know, we'll have to put in perpendicular the beam spanning to pick up these point loads through those columns. So let's take a look at what we got. It's looking pretty good. Hide this wall. Not bad. Okay, we're just about there with the walls. Uh, I think we wanted to raise this one up and essentially do the same thing to this little wall that we did on these outside walls. So might even be able to do that from here. Just 
just take this profile, edit. Just gonna delete that out with the top one. So I'll come over here, use my match line, tab through, select it all, and it should give me the exact stud that I had over there. So that's great. Um, it's obviously not gonna have to go that far, so we'll take it to the inside face of this, snap it. Let's see if it wants to play nice. Yes. Now we can copy that one down or do the same thing we did with the other one. Which again, you know, it's just a matter of setting up section cuts to get access to editing these profiles to make sure that they're um, essentially um, matching up. But what I can do is just copy this one and pull it down. Let's see if it wants to play nice with us in 3D. It does, so that's good. And like we did for the other ones, these are gonna have to be um, modeled in, in profile and elevation, not in plan view like they are right now. So I'll probably just delete these out, copy one of these in place, paste it in place, edit it. Can just delete that out. Select these here, offset this one and a half. Tidy everything up. Okay. And do the same thing over here. Underside top side might give you a couple warnings because it's overlapping with the previous stud that we did and there we go I got my two studs make sure it's five and a half not sure which way it's gonna project so it's kind of a guess so we got negative five and a half inches going in and now that tells me that my rafter is going to intersect with the top plate there. But the interesting thing is we want to do bird's mouth cuts on our rafters, which means, uh, you know, the rafters are sitting up vertically and they're sitting on this slope and you want the framers to basically notch out the angle that will sit on top of these studs so that they can add their um, rafter tie-downs um, or hurricane tie-downs. Uh, gives them a nice flat place to, to cut that across and fasten it in. So let's take a look at this and see where that intersection point is gonna be. I might have to do this one in section. So take a look at my floor plan. Let's see if I have one set up through there. I do not, so I'll just copy this one over. Go to view. Yeah, this is where my stud is. That's where it needs to be. So let's edit in place, take these, move them up, and again I'm going to align the top of the top stud on the inside face with that point right there. And that's what the bird's mouth cut will look like coming down there. So uh, again, since I modeled the vertical studs as a set or a series. I'm able to just grab that, pull it up, snap it to the bottom, and it should take them all up to the bottom there. 
So in this case, um, you know, the stud framing wasn't lining up exactly with the top plate there, but that's okay. You, you have to look at where it's basically cutting through the stud at this angle to align with the back side or the top side of that stud. So if we go back to that section, this is the lower one, this is the new one. But since, uh, you know, we essentially had that jogging down, this is where it's gonna intersect there. So it might look a little funky to you in 3D, but that's how it's gonna work. And, uh, you know, they might add another stud there to stabilize the, the stud framing so it's not kind of teetering there. Um, or take a stud full width on the back side of that. Uh, just to secure it, but we'll let them kind of handle that in the field. So now we've got our exterior load bearing walls all framed up, sitting on top of our sheathing, on top of our floor joists, and I want to put in that beam picking up this new uh, load bearing wall floating over the garage. So to do that, we're going to jump into a plan view, which I just cleaned up here a little bit. Um, I like to provide the framers a framing floor plan and ghost the walls down below so we can see what walls, um, you know, we have that are load bearing. So in this case, uh, this is the garage below and between essentially A and B2. Um, you know, it's a void space above. And since we have this new structural load bearing wall up above, I'm going to have to create a new structural line. And I did all my other ones to the inside face. Uh, so I might just keep it consistent there. And I do actually have a family that I modeled for floor joists and beams. And so it takes essentially just a generic model and allows you to use um, a level to place it. And that's why there's an offset here, which the typical offset of one and a half inches for flooring, uh, three quarter inch hardwood and three quarter inch plywood. So let's load this into our model here and see if it wants to work for us. So yeah, you can see already there. We'd have to go to our level, level two. Sort of swinging around and I'll just drop it. Let's see if does we want what we wanted to so yeah it's down one and a half inches it looks like it's fitting into the floor joist dimension that I had uh, in our kind of typical floor model component and I always do the joists with the sheathing and then our finish flooring separate because the finished floor changes a lot of times for instance in the bathroom between out here in the primary bedroom area. So it's just nice to have that flexibility um, from the different floor standpoint. So if I go back into my plan view, I should see this joist member here, which for our purposes is going to become a beam. And I think I've got it so that, yeah, it's an itemized component here. So if I bump that up to five and a quarter, which it'll most likely be. Uh, and joist height, it's gonna be a big one. Uh, it's gonna set it at 18 inches for right now. And we've got the clear head space down below, so I'm not worried about it. Um, but you know, even conflicting with the overhead garage doors, we'll need to confirm that everything's clear, but I'm pretty sure everything is. 
So right now I'm going to take this to the inside of that and since I don't want to overcomplicate my grid spacing, I'm going to put that right on the center so that I know my beam is also right on the center. Okay. And I'll take that all the way to the outside. Stud wall. Again, I'm going to pull it past and use my line tool. Same thing on this side. Going full span on this guy. And just make sure that it didn't snap funky, no. Okay, so that's our structural beam supporting our two point loads for the beam above, which is then capturing a column above, which is then capturing the ridge beam coming across. And that ridge beam is spanning from this new column line, which we will call A1. Actually do A2. Uh, I was always instructed to leave a little bit of buffer in your column spacings. You never know when you're gonna have to add an extra one in there. So uh, we're doing that one on center and Now our floor joists, we're going to rotate, which works out better for our spans in this direction. So if I take this, do a little 90, convert it back to a typical 2 by 12. started one side can't see through this so I'm gonna make it a wireframe just to confirm everything's lining up with my outside edges and snapping to the inside face of my beam there so that's essentially gonna act as uh, this is my rim joist down below the, the most outside floor joist was called your rim joist and uh, it would probably fly past that and come to the outside edge uh, we've got more than enough bearing well I'm gonna sandwich it like that I want as much bearing as I can get on that beam coming across there so let's Swing back to this side and butt this one up against my masonry. And since we're doing rim joists, I'm just going to take this, copy it, rotate it, and do our ledger. Or it's not really a ledger, it's just, uh, I guess, a rim joist on the inside. We'll get, have that bolted, through bolted to the inside masonry wall. There, there. How are we looking structurally? Can we see any of this? Let's take we're off in that corner there, but there's too much to hide in this model, so, so we'll just keep going at it in plan view. Rotate this guy, bring him over. So 
So this is our new, or this is our existing load bearing wall here, which we're gonna rotate or I mean keep these running consistent all the way across here. We'll probably double up the board here. Move that to that side. Just run it full length and then copy it over. Go all the way to that outside rim joist there. And we're on a bearing wall there, so then we'll span uh, east-west our floor joists from the masonry wall existing there to our load bearing wall here, and then from the inside of that wall to the new beam that we put in and use joist hangers to frame into the uh, outside face of that beam there. Okay, so I think we got everything to the inside of the beam framed out with a rim joist. I'm just gonna take this one, copy it over, and then we'll run our 16 inches on center with our two by 12s. So I'm gonna take this one, copy it over. Okay, we got that one side done up there. And I do want to pop this in our 3D view just to see how we're looking. I gotta give this color or material. Make it the same material as all my other studs. I have a wood stud material. Okay. And again, these are not load bearing walls, so I'm gonna remove these. So our model is just strictly looking at structural walls. And then this wall, like I said, um, you know, it's, it's actually penetrating beyond, but this is not load bearing and the wall itself is not gonna be load bearing. We're gonna have a column uh, landing on these rim joists, which then uh, the load path follows down through that outside wall. 
there onto this foundation wall below. So I can hide these. This is the ceiling below. The other good thing about doing layouts like this is I mean, you can get sort of an idea of um, your lighting down below, if it's going to conflict with any of your joist spacing. And if uh, you, know, you really wanted to, you can direct the framers to start at one end or the opposite end um, if it works out better for your lighting layout. Uh, in most cases, you know, for something like a field condition layout of recessed light fixtures uh, you know no one's gonna notice if that one's off a couple inches now again depends on your client and um, you know the project budget and everything you as an architect and service provider have to gauge whether or not uh, you know how important that level of detail is you can't be spending your dollars uh, time-wise if the client hasn't paid for those dollars so just something to keep in mind there so when we look at it like this we can see um, you know my plywood layer is removed so that's where we've got a little bit of a gap showing there but so far uh, it looks like everything's lining up properly Some floating outlets, things like that. Just hide that category. And there we go, there's kind of a sneak peek at my beam down below. Like I mentioned, uh, you know, I am up over my garage, overhead garage. But looking at this now, um, you know, it's a pretty heavy point load coming down, uh, transferring the loads across. I'm going to have to confirm that I've got a beam uh, above my garage door that can handle the load captured uh, by this new beam we're putting in here. So might even have to install a W section to um, basically stay beneath this beam and above that garage door. So it might have to be uh, W860 something but we will address that in another video here okay so let's do the joists running in the other direction now I want to jump back into my structural framing plan and can essentially take all these, copy them over, use my align tool, snap them. So the other way to do it is uh, actually use the array command. So I know for anyone who's actually watching this, there's a uh, hundred ways to do each task. Some ways are more efficient than others. Some ways you just do because it's easy and never learned the way to do it the proper way. <laughs> so let's see, I've got my array command here. Got an array number, move to the second position. Uh, I want to do Sixteen two. No, let's try twenty. Twenty 
things too many. I'm not sure if I can just delete these out and that edits it. No, yeah, once you delete it, it breaks the system. So, 20, it looks like, take four off, 16. That gets us just before our outside rim joist there, so we should be good to go. So what's nice about that is, again, like that's a system and you can edit it. Um, but once you delete one of the joists, it kind of breaks the system and treats them more like uh, grouped members. So anyway, we'll just leave that like that back into here so we'll have a detail for these to be joist hangers in there looks like it's not quite lining up so just did a little investigative work there it looked like I had it set uh, too low just when I have this selected here at the elevation level just need it to be zero because my offset uh, is in the component itself there so anyway, we are sitting now three quarters of an inch below our bottom plate to uh, compensate for our floor sheathing. And we've got our rim joists in there and we'll just need one more set of rim joists on the perimeter there and floor joists tying in on the other side of our beam to the outside rim joist. So let's take care of that now. Okay, so we got our floor all modeled up and now we can raise this back up. And we can model in our ridge beam. Okay, so I'm going to want to land this beam basically on the inside face of that joist. So that should do the trick there. And now you can see where that beam is spanning back over that load-bearing wall, and then the second beam will span back to the inside wall and land there. So I'm gonna copy this, paste it in place, And now I got my two beams up there and I'll have to put my, basically the wall, the outside wall that we did there, supporting the ridge beam on that side, copy it over and then just 
edit out everything that we don't need. So that's why it's nice to it's nice to group these things also because you can just kind of sweep, select, and you know you're not going to grab everything in the background and model these as you know bigger parts and pieces that make it easy to just sort of swipe and select. Okay, and then we got our column there that we will take all the way down to the top of this multiple times. One, two, three, four. There we go. Yeah, now we can start modeling in our rafters. Actually, copy this over in our floor plan. So, for that one, we'll most likely need to tuck that into the wall there so that we landing on some stud framing and not the outside of the brick wall. So it'll look something like that. And now we can start with our rafter framing. So again, the best way to do that uh, is probably from our side profile view here. And we have a pretty tight eave line. We, we're not really projecting very far beyond our roof line at all, actually. So uh, these roof rafters are gonna sit basically flush with the outside face of that wall. We'll do one in profile and then go in a plan view roof plan and just copy them across. first one and again you know we can cut out the uh, bird's mouth cuts on that uh, you don't have to it's again just how detailed you want to get with your model but if I jump back into my 3d view uh, of course I'm cut through that so I've got to extend my section box and a quarter two by tens so let's make sure edit that profile make sure it's in line taking two inches off of that it's good for those spans and then in this view I can just snap this to the outside face of that pull it back 1.5 So we can get our fascia board in there and then we'll be good to go. So before we copy these over, I'm gonna go to the edit work plane and disassociate just so that when I'm copying and pasting, it doesn't try and snap back to its original position or anything strange like that. 
I want these all in the same model for this side and then we'll just copy and flip it on the other side. And there's that little bit of a um, jog in the wall, but actually the roof flies past that, so it should still remain the same. So if I go into my plan view here, I just take that and kind of blindly copy and paste over. Sixteens on center. Go to my wireframe view, take these three, and then copy those four feet on center. Four, four. And again, you can do the array or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, you know, this is just quick to manage in this process. And I think I want these to go all the way across. And we'll put a, a new um, ridge stud in there. Let's check out 3D. Not bad. So, since this is a whole set, we'll be able to uh, model a void that cuts through this on this slant, and we will offset that um, one and a half inches so that our plate can ride up this valley there. Um, that's how. You know, we'll remove the asphalt shingles on the top of the roof, get down to the uh, sheathing plywood, and they can mount a bottom plate along the valley there to frame all of these rafters into and do that same on the other side. So we'll try and model that in the best we can without going crazy so I also want to get my fascia board in so I'm going to copy and paste this in the same place edit Got that in there. Let's see which direction this goes. Okay. I'll we'll take that all the way back to this existing fascia board. Tie into that. Perfect. Void cut.
so we have those cut across there. Um, wasn't really able to see where our sheathing and everything will end up there because I got this set to uh, existing show previous and new. Just want to show complete so it's all unveiled. Uh, give me my details. So if I come back again with the structural framing, let's edit this again, make sure we're down at the sheathing layer. Again, very small details, but you know, in some views it might make more of a difference than other views. So, you know, I got, I think, a quarter of an inch or something like that for the actual roofing material. And usually if you're, again, not able to select that, I just go down to the next one that I know I can select or move it to and then raise it back up to where it needs to be. So I know the dimension of the sheathing on that was three quarters of an inch, so take it to that line and you got a clean cut now down to the underside of that uh, roofing material. Looks like that one didn't quite make the cut. Take it out. Okay. So not bad. Then to model in our bottom plate along the ridge line, there's a couple ways we can do it. One method is to again take this profile and cut it through and then cut a void along this angle. That would get you a, a pretty close cut there, which would be essentially in the field a compound miter cut for each of these rafters. So let's just take a stab at it and see what we get. Create an extrusion, set the plane. It's already set, so we'll say okay. And again, display the view. There we go. I'm going to take this essentially that's going to be the bottom of our bottom plate and one and a half copy that up so we're going to actually have to modify the uh, the void that we had cut through there and we'll take this for now just all the way up to here slice it across the top and same thing at the bottom we'll basically take it to this fascia board stud material okay and let it rip Let's see what we got wrong way of course bring it across here just get it sort of tight enough let's pull it flush with that and we'll say it flush with this ridge beam for now. It's actually going to want to pull through that. So we know we're aligned with the roof plane and now we actually want to take 
this void and bring it up to the top of that stud. Or I'm calling it a stud, the bottom plate. So let's see if we can do that there. No, so we'll grab this and we'll have to edit. Snap it to the top side of this. Now I know I'm cutting those flush with the top of those. Nice clean cuts. Compound miter. And it's a little guess work, but we could probably go in our plan view and draw or model a uh, void to cut through this. So let's check that out. Let's give it a try. Void extrusion. Let's see if I have to set it. Top of roof. Top of roof existing. That should work. And I'm curious if I just select these intersection lines. I mean, I know the, those are on the right angle, but we might have to pull them back or forward depending on where they land. Okay, so let's check this out. It's trying to cut vertically. Let's cut it all the way through. And sometimes it doesn't cut the actual model, so you have to grab it and cut it yourself. So I'll grab that, tell it to cut through this. There we go. So it is a little off. <clears throat> it's trying to calculate the intersection of the actual roofs and not just the joists uh, or rafters. So uh, we will have to kind of pull that into a line with uh, our rafters there. So let's see if we can do that just by taking this and snapping it to that. Yes. Same thing back here. Okay. See if that worked. It did. Okay, so <clears throat> that's not bad. It'll be something in that ballpark. So I'm gonna call that good enough for now. And you know what we what I can do is model this existing roof and triangulate that and show it demolished with only the top layer of asphalt shingles but again we're getting into you know very detailed nuanced things that are just essentially quicker to show and plan with some drafting lines than actually model so uh, you know it's up to you you just got to be careful and how much time you spend modeling this stuff and see if it's really beneficial to you or not So I'm going to copy this, paste in place, and then modify my work plane to be the back side of this, and edit the extrusion. Go to one of my building sections and pull this up. And just <clears throat> line it up with the top of that ridge beam. Go back to my structural view. Looks like it's good to go there. Say OK. Of course, it's going the wrong direction. And so same thing for this. Um, you know, it looks like some of these are going to be falling short of my ridge line there so we can go back in and kind of tuck these back up and 
against there and even raise the ridge beam so that it's sitting more properly but the most important thing is that all these roof rafters are in line and you're not modifying the you know elevation of any of those a uh, situation like that you know they pair this one off in one direction and copy it over in the other direction and one would uh, you know meet the uh, the ridge joist and then one would meet the ridge beam but for our purposes uh, this is good enough so I do want to just slice this so it looks proper And sometimes you'll get your void cutting through your other models, so you gotta grab it and instruct it to uncut the geometry. So I want this to be uncut with that. And I think we <coughs> had this model a little too high there, so take this now and bring it back down to the top of our ridge joist and we would also be cutting it uh, down the center line there so that when we mirror it it is Symmetrical. So we're just about there. I'm going to go into my roof plan view and mirror this over my center line. Make sure that it's copied and it is. And there we go. I know I got a duplicate uh, ridge joist in there, but that's okay for now. Um, for the most part, you know, this got us maybe 85, 90% of the way there. Um, we'll need to go in and do some call outs with some additional details showing the uh, connections for these beam to posts and just some overall, you know, general details. But this is looking pretty good. We got this other roof hidden here the existing roof. Um, <clears throat> and then we've got some framing that will drop down there to just capture and enclose that. Uh, obviously have some skylights in here that I haven't modeled around, but again, you know, you can just do a call out around those types of details and it's a lot easier to spend a, a minute or two um, with some drafting lines in uh, 
simple drafting view rather than model it up or you can model it up too but uh, I really just wanted to work through this for anyone who is either starting out on their own with some remodel projects uh, like this for addition work or even new construction work and just understand the basics of modeling um, structural elements and like I mentioned earlier you know I would love to have a little spare time where I can work on some families and kind of components that can uh, be easier to tag easier to manipulate but uh, really in a lot of these situations like for instance these compound miter cuts uh, you know it's pretty difficult to get a family that's versatile that can do uh, all these unique scenarios that you're going to get into so um, hopefully this was helpful if uh, you guys like it I would love to post more videos on sort of the essentials of running a small practice and modeling things in Revit and putting together permit sets and designs and hopefully this is helpful for some of you out there thanks for tuning in